Hey guys, Jamie with PC Monkey here, bringing you a do-it-yourself computer video. Uh, today we're working on an Acer laptop, and we're going to try to diagnose why the laptop is turning on, but the screen is staying black. Uh, so that's the, uh, the problem we're dealing with in this video. That could show itself a couple ways. Either your computer could turn on, you could see the, the lights coming on when you hit power. You may be able to hear the fan going if your computer has a fan. Uh, but the, the screen will either stay totally black, or it will be so dim uh, that you can barely see anything. Sometimes you'll see people with, with flashlights on it and then you can see things, but other than that, it, it looks dark. So that's what we're dealing with in, in this video. Uh, if your computer is not starting at all, so you hit power and nothing happens, that's video number one in the description. That's a computer that won't turn on at all. Uh, so reference video one. If your computer turns on but it just keeps restarting, that's a boot loop. Check out video two in the description. This is just for a computer that turns on and the screen stays very dim or black. So the first, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you through all the possible reasons why this could be happening from the easiest and cheapest fix to the most complicated. So at the end of this video, you would have diagnosed why it's happening and you would know how to fix it. Um, hopefully it was the easier fix, but we'll go through all the fixes with you in this video. So one of the easiest and the most likely reasons why this is happening is a RAM issue. We're going to flip your computer over and go get your RAM. Um, as a side point, if you have any questions or comments, um, feel free to leave them. Uh, check out the frequently asked questions first. If we notice you guys asking the same question over and over again, uh, we'll put it in the FAQs just to save you some time, as well as save us some time. Uh, but if it's not there, feel free to leave a message, and we try to get back to you a couple times a day at least. So, there's your RAM. Hopefully you have easily accessible RAM like, like we did. If not, you may have to do a little more surgery to get in there. But there's your RAM. Your RAM is going to be held in usually the same way. There's two spring-loaded arms here. To get the RAM out, you would pull them apart and the RAM stick would just pop up like that and then you could slide it out. So to do the test we want to do for this, this only has one stick of RAM. If your computer only has one stick of RAM, unfortunately to perform this test, you would need a second stick of RAM that you know is good. In, in the computer shop we have, it's not a problem. We have uh, RAM everywhere so we would do that, but you would have to purchase another stick of RAM. If you have two sticks of RAM in your computer, which is more common, you would diagnose it this way. You would take out one of the sticks of RAM, leave the second stick in, and try to restart your computer. If your computer starts and the screen stays black, then that's not the reason why. Uh, if your computer starts and the screen's fine, it means the RAM stick you took out is bad and you would need to replace it. Um, if, if, if that doesn't change anything though, take the stick of RAM out that's in there and then put this one back. So you're basically trying each stick of RAM by itself to see if your screen will display anything. Uh, that's a, a well over 50% uh, chance that that's what it is. 50% or more of the computers we get in that start and the screen doesn't light up is because of a RAM issue. Uh, if you need help ordering the correct kind of RAM, if you notice on here there's a lot of numbers on that RAM stick. Uh, check out video three in the description. That'll, it, it's a very brief tutorial on, on, on which numbers matter and how to buy the right RAM for your computer. But if you've uh, tried the RAM test, either with one or two sticks, and we haven't been able to get our screen to light up, then we're gonna move on to the next fix. The next fix is a CMOS battery error, or, or a CMOS battery problem. Zoom out. Now this is a general Acer video, so I'm not going to open up necessarily that computer. Uh, if you need help accessing the CMOS battery in your computer, uh, write us what make and model you have. Uh, most likely we'll have that video. If not, search for a disassembly video uh, so you can find how to get into that. So these are two different motherboards, and the one we're going to look at is, oh actually, we, you know what, yeah, so we'll get these two motherboards. We'll zoom into this one. This is what your CMOS battery looks like most likely. Is right there. Uh, so your CMOS battery is this little large watch type looking battery. It may also look like this. It may also be wrapped in sort of uh, electrical tape with a plug on it. That's your CMOS battery. 
Now, we include this fix. This is a very unlikely fix. Uh, you're looking at one out of uh, 10 or 20 times that this is the reason why. Uh, but it's a very cheap fix. These things cost nothing. Uh, so swapping this out is, is a very cheap fix. Uh, so we would do that second. On this motherboard here, you can see the CMOS battery is a lot smaller, but it looks obviously the exact same. So that's what you're looking for, um, or the larger version, or the electrical tape wrapped version. If you need help getting at yours, uh, check out video number four in the description. That's a BIOS reset video, uh, and that can show you a little more in depth on how to get at the CMOS battery. Now, if your laptop is still not turning on after you've performed the uh, RAM check, if you've looked at the CMOS battery option, and your computer still isn't functioning at this point, you're probably looking at an LCD issue or an LCD cable issue, which makes sense seeing as how your LCD won't display. To test this, we bring in the help of an external monitor. So what you would do here is you would take your laptop and you would plug it into an external monitor. Generally speaking, you can use a couple different cords to do this. You can use either a VGA cord, which you may recognize, or you can use an HDMI cord uh, to plug into an external monitor. I'll show you what these look like. So this would be your HDMI port right there. I hope you can see that very well. Yeah, HDMI port. Uh, this one doesn't have a VGA connector. It's, it's, it, it, it's a newer model. Newer computers won't have them. But you would plug your computer into the external monitor and try turning it on. If your computer is still behaving the same and it turns on, but your screen stays black, but the external monitor displays your desktop, then you know you have an issue with your LCD or your LCD cable because your motherboard and everything is working fine. Um, in that case, you would proceed to replace the LCD cable first, we recommend. It's an easier replacement and it's cheaper. And if that doesn't work, then you would replace your LCD. Now, uh, some computers, this is where it gets kind of annoying, is some computers do not like external monitors. So if I plug this into the external monitor and the computer turns on, the screen stays black, and this screen also stays black, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not sending the signal over. Some computers do not like sending it to an external monitor when it thinks it can use its own LCD. If that's the case, uh, some computers on the top function key will have an external monitor button. Click on that to activate the ability to send there. If you don't have that button, you have to force the computer to send it. You'd have to go into your computer and unplug your LCD cable from your motherboard. That would force it to send it over there. That's a little involved if you're at that point, if you're at this point in the video and you want to do that. Um, Google or, or search on YouTube for a disassembly video for your specific model. It'll show you how to get into the computer and get at that LCD cable to unplug it. So if you've gone through these options um, and it's still not working, um, now the only thing left to check at this point is involving your motherboard. So we'll bring this motherboard back over. We'll show you two different motherboards that you're looking at and how you would deal with each kind of motherboard. So the first kind of motherboard we already looked at with your CMOS battery. We're gonna go for your CPU first. Um, odds are this is an unlikely uh, culprit for your screen not displaying. Uh, generally speaking, motherboards are designed to sacrifice themselves and save the CPU. So usually you'll see a dead motherboard before you see a dead CPU. Um, but we're going to swap out the CPU first. If you have a motherboard like this, however, this CPU does not come off. So if you go into your computer after looking up your disassembly video, and your motherboard looks like this and your CPU is not removable, then this is not an option for you. At this point, you would replace your motherboard. If you have a motherboard that looks like this, where the CPU is removable. You can tell because you can put your screwdriver in, you can switch this switch right there, and the CPU comes up. So if your CPU is removable at this point, swap out your CPU, see if that works. If you swap out your CPU and the computer is still not displaying, then that means that you've exhausted all possibilities, 
your motherboard's bad and you need to swap out your motherboard. So we've taken you through the whole range of possibilities it could be, uh, from a simple RAM issue to a CMOS battery issue, to an LCD and LCD cable, uh, right down to changing out your motherboard. So in this video, you've gone through everything. After you've tried everything, you will be able to fix this issue. It's just a matter of which solution it was. If you have any questions, if you got stuck anywhere, if you're facing a problem that you don't understand how to get by, uh, check out the frequently asked questions. Uh, if you don't see it there, leave us a message, leave us a comment. We'll get back to you a couple times a day at least. Uh, and if this was helpful, please like and share. Uh, please subscribe if you enjoy do-it-yourself computer repair. Thanks for watching.